we have a visa. So they're telling me, Miss Girl, you can fly. And I'm like, what? Hello! How are you guys doing? Um, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Today's video, as you've read in the title, I'm just gonna explain my journey to this country. Huh? This journey? <laughs> I nearly didn't go actually. So I'ma take you back to the the, the Beninge starting on the 6th of September. So like on the day I put all my luggage in the car. So in the car was me, my mom, my dad. No, my dad wasn't in the car. That's a lie. <laughs> it was me, my mom, and my aunt. Yeah. Oh no, my dad was in the car. <laughs> at around seven o'clock in the morning on our way to the airport and then we arrived right we checked in my bags and i had on my carry-on luggage and then we weren't really late per se but like there were a lot of people so yeah so this is currently we're in east london okay east london south africa we're scanning in so that we can go and check our carry-on luggage right does that make sense and then this is where i say goodbye to my aunt and my dad because um, we were gonna leave them and me and my mom were gonna go together we were boarding around like 8 or 5 like 5 past 8 in the morning we walked to the plane cool cool that's standard procedure so yeah everything is smooth sailing from here on right okay so at like 9 15 we're on the plane me and my mom and we're sitting we're sitting we're waiting to take off you know um we're flying to johannesburg because that's normally where international flights are jump to when we're, we've landed in johannesburg we were waiting for our luggage because we had to from joburg we had to take our luggage so that they can put it in the actual flight eventually the bags came so that's 10 o'clock in the morning i'm supposed to be on on the plane away at 20 to 2 in the afternoon right so there's a lot of time a lot of time to kill so with me and my mom we went walking down the road to exchange currency right we needed to get the money change it into pounds then after we changed the money we decided oh let's eat we ordered this pizza at around 25 minutes past 12. the chaos is yet to come okay now after we had ordered the pizza we decided we need to go and check in the luggage okay go there and we wait in the queue i showed them my passport like before you can check in your luggage they want to see your visa for the country that you're going to put the first bag on top and then we give them the passport that's how it usually works now as they're checking my passport they say oh where's your um <laughs> visa for geneva geneva is in switzerland i think and i'm like what do you mean what what are you talking about they say oh no you need one i don't want peace i want problems always by this time my uncle has arrived because he was coming to send me off um, and he lives in Pretoria. They both come to send me off which I really appreciated. So they're telling me, Miss girl, you can fly. And I'm like, what? Oh, there's a rainbow. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Can you see the rainbow? Well, keep in mind, ne? I need to board in like an hour at this point. The thing is, they weren't giving us the time of day. So it's not only me that was experiencing this issue. And like, the people there were just like rushing us off. They were like, okay, you can't fly or you have to book another flight. Let me tell you, to book another flight, it was like 45,000 rand. I was like, oh, are you mad? Are you, are you talking English? Are you speaking English to me? At this point, I am panicking because I mean, what else can I do? Um, <laughs> Cause I need to be in this country, right? At the end of the day though, um, they said, nope, you can't fly. Book another flight or like check other airlines. And so we're going on a trip to check other airlines. Let me tell you, we still haven't eaten. <laughs> oh my gosh, my phone is about to die. My mom's phone's about to die. It was just a mess, okay? And throughout this whole thing, my dad is calling me. And I am here, I'm stressing. I just don't want to answer phone. I told him that, oh, we can't fly. Anyways, things were said, feelings were hurt. Like, I literally, I was, I was crying. Because, like, I mean, this whole process, 
I've basically done it by myself, right? I didn't no agents. I don't have money for that, first of all. Second of all, I did lots of research and nowhere did it state that I need a visa for Switzerland. The thing is, right, on the website, if your PNR number is different from for any of the flights, um, you might need a visa. But the thing is, only on the day is when I was able to view the PNR numbers and that's when I found out that they are different and I'm like, how am I supposed to know? Yeah, I mean they did say you could call but like they didn't leave a number so I'm like, <laughs> who do I call? <laughs> that was the most traumatic experience of my life. Me. What was really painful about the experience is the fact that I wanted, me and my mom, we both wanted like a calm, chill thing where we could sit together, have like a nice time, just the two of us, you know, just to talk for the last time, you know, like we wanted to be relaxed. We wanted to eat our pizza and relax. No. No. <laughs> Nothing like that. Now we're walking, okay, we're running around like chickens and ducks, ne? And we have to push heavy luggage bags. I was like, no, man, this isn't the life. So we're pushing these heavy bags and I'm like, I'm getting tired. I'm still on an empty stomach. My mom is also on an empty stomach. She went to go and fetch the pizza. The pizza is cold. <laughs> so now, at this point, We've checked um, Kenya Airways, we've checked Qatar Airways, we've checked uh, British Airways, we've checked Turkish Airlines, everywhere. The whole of the international airlines in Johannesburg Airport, we scavenged them. We rummaged through all the information we could. We asked everyone at the desks, in the information desks, at the luggage where you go and check in your luggage we asked them as well we went we went we went we were checking everywhere because i had to fly today okay basically everywhere was like fully booked um or they were available for like the 20 something of september and i was like huh so while we're physically checking i'm also checking on my phone for any flights that are available by now it's past 20 to 2 so i finally found this one um i want to let you guys know like the prices be behind flying and going to the uk or anywhere abroad so that you guys can be better informed so we ended up picking that one we told my dad that this is the flight that we're going on it's flying at, at 20 past 7 and they were basically <laughs> like boarding around like an hour from when we just booked, like just crunch time, everything was so hectic. As you can see, finally, like they sent this. We've successfully checked in and all of that. They gave the booking reference, they gave what terminal I was going to depart from. There was no need for any visas, just your UK visa because it's going straight to, to London Heathrow, Heathrow and then to Manchester Airport. I was like, okay. God, I don't know what the plan was. I don't know why this happened the way it happened, but I trusted you. Let's hope no, no more issues, okay? At this time now, my uncle had to leave. Um, he had been like a strong grounding presence that I'm really grateful for because the way I would have broken down. He goes off, goes to work, and then my mom needed to leave because she had a ticket from Joburg back to East London and it was around like two no it was around three or something like that we were in the queue right to check in our luggage at British Airways at the gate um, and my uncle has just left my mom is about to leave and I'm going to be all on my own finally had my luggage checked um, I've gone through I've scanned my tickets um, we've checked the check-in luggage um, I'm now waiting for the flight and this was around three o'clock in the afternoon the funny thing the ironic thing is while I'm sitting here on this chair overlooking the views of airplane here is British Airways the plane right that I'm going to be boarding on just a few walking steps from that plane is Emirates and I'm like girl you can't disrespect me like that by looking at me in my face you better move on out, okay? Because I don't know what's your issue. Around about 20, no, 10 to six is when we were like, we had boarded, we checked in, they checked our passport, they checked our 
thingies, these things. So we'd basically been sitting in the airplane for quite a while. Um, I got a window seat and around 20 to 7 the plane started moving. I was like, yeah, 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 we're going, we're leaving this country. Um, we were given blankets on this plane. It was quite a long flight. I think it was around 14, 15 hours May we flew. So around about half past nine, we got our dinner. I really don't know what it was called. Um, the rice, it was yellow rice, but it was like bland. But the like the vegetables on the side, that one had a nice burst of flavor, at least. And we had gotten like a chocolate mousse dessert type thing. Um, vegetables, like biscuits and stuff. I think I watched about two movies or something like that. I was tired, so after those two movies, I was like out like a light. Around five o'clock, it was still very dark. We got breakfast, which was like, we had pineapples, which my favorite, my favorite fruit, aside from strawberries. We got like a muffin, um, and then the breakfast, I don't know what it was called. It was nice, um, kind of. Point, I wanted my mom's Millie Meal Pup. We landed around half past five. Half past five, I'm making my way. There was this lady, that I stumbled up upon and she was the sweetest because at this point my sim card is not working my sim card is MIA she like really she was helpful because I needed to communicate with my parents like I'm, at, I'm I've landed you know what I mean and so um, she allowed me to send my mom a message throughout um, throughout the whole thing she was like so kind I don't know who she is um, but I really hope God blesses her. We're safely in the United Kingdom. Okay, cool. I was trying to make my way. I was trying to find my way to this big. Look, the airport was too late. All the pictures, all the videos I took here. Um, making my way down the steps, trying to find out where to go. Everything is going smoothly now. Thank you, Jesus. And no, no, <laughs> not yet. Um, 20 to 6 now, I am now going to border control. So when I had finally gotten to border control, I basically just said, um, where am I going? Where's my like my final destination? And I said Manchester. And what am I going to do in the UK? I said it's for studies. And then the guy, he was so kind. The guy was such a friendly guy. And he was like, oh, what are you studying? And I'm like, medical sciences. Um, and then I don't I don't remember what other questions he asked, but literally I thought there was gonna be like a whole question and answer Q and A hey like that lasted like five ten minutes, but obviously that didn't happen. So I was so grateful. <laughs> like when I tell you guys, I kid you not, I have like a whole list. I'm gonna try and find it. I have a whole list of questions that I thought they were gonna ask. Let me show you. Look at this. This is a page full of questions that they would ask. This is another page full of questions that I thought they were going to ask me. Um, another one. <laughs> another one. <laughs> I tell you, this is in the last page. I tell you, I was prepared for any question they would throw at me. I was ready. I was ready only to get three simple questions. He said, enjoy your care. I was like, thank you. 10 to 6 in the morning. I was on the plane, as you can see here. I don't remember when we took off, but I was on the plane. And there was like... From here on out, they were just lovely people overall. Everyone in British Airways is lovely. Lovely. I'll fly with them any time of my life. I'll fly with them. I'll go anywhere. I'll go anywhere. Because <laughs> even the, the flight attendants, they were so kind. They were so sweet. So, yeah. Yeah, no. Most definitely. Um, it's now bright outside. It was raining a little bit. I'm sitting, I'm chilling. I'm looking at the views. Beautiful, beautiful views. You know, like the way God created this earth, I don't even know. It's so intricately designed. 20 past, 25 minutes past five, I am getting my luggage. I've gotten my luggage. He said, if you don't get, if you exit the door where like luggage is, you can't go back. So best believe you better have gotten all the luggage. And I did, I got all my luggage. Um, you see the trolley, the trolley to carry your luggage? It was like one pound and I'm like, Something, something like this that I'm only going to use for a few minutes. I must pay. I was so shook. I was like, "Huh? Okay. Or that's not gonna be me. I'll use my two hands that God gave me to stroll my bag." <laughs>
So here I am, I'm sitting now, I don't know what to do because the school hasn't responded to say, oh, we're coming to fetch you. And I'm like, where, how am I going to get home? Um, at this point, I've called everyone, I've changed to my SIM card, to the UK SIM card. Everyone knows I'm safe and sound. Everyone knows I've got my luggage. My family is at ease. I am at ease. Now, girl, Miss girl, I go and I go and book a ticket on the on the train right because i know okay the school's not answering they're not gonna fetch me probably i don't want to sleep here that was 27 27.14 pounds dollars sorry dollars i don't know what that was in pounds but anyways miss girl i paid that um thinking that i could get to the <laughs> oh, there's another chaotic moment thinking that me myself and i could get there in time me i didn't estimate how long it would be to get from where it was the train station okay so i booked one for half past nine and i'm here strolling my heavy luggage to get there i had to walk like 12 15 minutes to get to the place so i ended up missing <laughs> I ended up missing the train so I had to book another one for the same price honestly so as you can see this was the picture that I was greeted with when I finally arrived at the station waiting for my actual train to get here giving Gold train it's giving you know platform 3a is where I need to be instead of taking the half past nine one which I'd missed I was waiting for the half past ten one right and the whole journey was four hours and eight minutes that was just a journey we came to the house i had packed all my luggage away i had prepared my food and around eight o'clock i had finally eaten like dinner because i didn't eat i didn't like eat at lunchtime yeah so that was the journey all i can say the advice i can give you is that you have to trust god <laughs> throughout the whole process like me i genuinely thought I'm not going to be accepted to any university in the UK like God was like my child trust in me and I was like okay I'll apply and I trust you God let your will be done now I'm like okay don't know if I'm gonna get the visa but I trust you God and he did it we got a visa we got a visa and I trusted him for safe journey so he can do any little thing anything that you think is impossible God can do it he just wants you to have trust and faith in him and I know that he will carry me through because God doesn't do half job. God finishes it completely. Essentially, you just have to trust in God and everything will work out, okay? Everything will work out. Don't worry. If you guys want any advice, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them for you. Story time. Okay, my card is full so I'm using my phone. Yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace, love, I'm out. Bye.